I've discovered women that in the genetic code to just destroy you. I think you probably can help me out. But I can. I'm sorry. I've got, I've got the magic I'm fingers sorry. here. I've never been better. Really? Never been better since I started listening to you. Oh, well, that's cool. I'm telling you, you know, I started listening to you about eight months ago, and you actually opened up my eyes about a lot of things. You know what? If you're a slut, I think it's fantastic because I have a chance to have sex with you. I, I don't have a problem with you being a slut. Uh-huh. Pull your pants off. Let's go. I just definitely want to let everybody know out there, I mean, the dad, the professor is right on everything. No matter how smart you think you are, you're not as smart as the professor. Always remember that. I just don't understand how someone gets to a place in their life as you have where you feel like it's a good idea and that you can feel like you're living a respectable life when it makes you feel good to help ruin people's relationships. As you said, you were proud oh, that I you am. were helping. I just wish if I'd been listening to you longer. Well, if you hadn't been uh, busy having kids throughout your 20s, <laughs> you wouldn't be in this position now, would you? Oh, well, you're right. She was Venezuelan with those big brown Venezuelan knockers that were just like, oh my God, I had dreams about them. They were so fantastic. Okay. I mean, I just keep thinking about. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just, how long have you been a student here? Uh, for about, I just got turned on about eight months ago from my dad. Uh, dad, 45 years old, gets more tail than his 23 year old son. That's right. Tell you, you that much. Straight, he did. You dance straight, he does, because he follows the rules. The combination of being ugly and overweight or something, I, I think it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, because it has kept me out of the trap. I, you know what? I don't care anymore. Every day that chick is busy doing something else is a free day for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Men are the biggest pussies they've ever been. That's because we've had a generation and a half of, of, of boys being raised by single mothers telling them to pee when they sit. Can you hear me? Yes, do you hear me? So you're just intentionally ignoring everything I'm trying to say here? No, I'm not ignoring you. But I you think you are. Well, this is a dialogue. This is supposed to be a dialogue, darling. This is not supposed to be you call up uh, like, the, like the hot air machine in the men's room. You press the button and a bunch of hot air comes out. Nope. You don't want my advice. You want me to put the rubber stamp on your stupid stuff that's going on over there. <laughs> yeah, I guess more or less. Well, I'm not doing it. Call the wrong show. All right. Call Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil loves to stir that butter churn up there over there. You know, and just have you churning over all these problems. We got to talk. We got to talk about where this relationship is going. Blah, 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 blah. Now, why don't you just call Dr. Phil? Just hook um, up. Let's I all think just hook up. People are going to be buying condos together, and that'll be that'll be their form of marriage. And stop and buying condos. Start buying condom. Hey, I'll tell you, you'll appreciate this. I've got all my clothes in my car. I just left. With, I just left the one trying to take fifty-one percent. <laughs> <laughs> the way I saw it, I'll take care of her if she takes care of me. But you know, I'm, I'm very busy. I don't have time to do all the stuff that needs to be done around the house. And I figure if I take Hal, care of her, and Hal, it, and then she takes you care know, of me, it ain't happening. it's cheaper to hire a housekeeper. That's what my dad said. From the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, it's Flash Friday. I just have Tom Likas! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank, thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival in the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery in Claremont, Kentucky. We're just having a blast here and drinking a lot of bourbon. Lots of it. Baby. How great is that? You wish you were here. That's how good it is. 
Flash Friday on the Tom Lycus Show. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you see a pair of headlights, you know what to do. Show us your knockers. Wide open telephones on the Tom Lycus Show here. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. Call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Monday, the Tom Likas Show will originate from the antiquated studios of the CBS Broadcast Center in New York City. I'll be speaking into the same microphone that Edward R. Murrow spoke into, and that microphone has not been maintained or even looked at by anybody in authority in some time. It'll be Monday and Tuesday on the show. We'll be coming to you from New York City. And uh, don't forget, then, uh, we'll be coming to you uh, the following week. We'll be in London. London, England. Not not London, Ontario. Not London, Minnesota. London, England. That's right. We'll be uh, doing a week in London for my third trip to Europe since July. What am I thinking? That's right, because the L.A. Kings and the Anaheim Ducks are going to open the NHL season at the brand-new O2 Arena in London. And a bunch of you have already bought packages to go. Some of you, uh, they got they got to be doing a giveaway of tickets. I just haven't heard it because I've been out of town, but um, I'm sure there's some kind of contest going on. Uh, we have heard from many people in England who listen to us online who want to know where the broadcast is going to be held. Well, this is... We're not on a radio station in London, so the uh, to have the 15 hobbyists who like to listen to overseas radio stations show up at a cavernous pub with a lot of empty seats would just not make any sense. Plus, it'd be like having a Mensa meeting. You know, you'd have the 15 people who are smart enough to figure out that there's a radio station, that there's a show called the Tom Liga Show, and it's in the United States, and it's on between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Britain time. and how, Really, think about it. Use your head. How many people are going to be there? Please. We welcome any hot English broads. Any hot English broads. Oh, are we wasting, we're wasting our time with this. <laughs> the hot English broads all left. I mean, really... You talk about going to England. Are we getting laid in England, Gary? And uh, the only good thing is that the hockey game, nobody from England will be going. It's going to be people from Sweden and Finland. and Den- There's some hot chicks there. Czech Republic, Russia. I'm sure that's who's going to be going to the game. And Anaheim. <laughs> that's, that's who's going to be there. What a mix of people. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, let's go to your calls here, 1-800-5800-TOM. And finally, on October 2nd, I will return from all of my travels. Where have I been since July? Yeah, Tuscany, Rome, Biarritz, Paris, Dallas, Kentucky, New York, and London. That's going to be all the places I went between July and September. Where else? Oh, Chicago. I forgot I went to Chicago with my brother, but we didn't broadcast from Chicago. I didn't broadcast from Biarritz either. Yeah, I, went, I was in Chicago. That's right. I went to uh, went to Wrigley Field for a weekend. It's all good. All right, let's go to your calls here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Maria on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Maria. Hi. I just started listening to your show maybe um, a month ago. Okay. And uh, you know how you you're, you give men advice of, oh, women are out there for cash or they want to get married. Well, some women don't want to get married, and some women do not need the men's cash. Yeah, but those are usually fat or fugly women. Uh, attractive women are usually not in that category. Um, well, myself, I've been married twice. And... I've been stupid enough to get married, but I, this is my second divorce, and I'm not planning on getting married. I know you're I'm not gonna... planning on it, dear. Pardon me? But I know you're not planning on it, but at your age, I see here on the screen you're 43 years old. At your age, what's the likelihood that someone's going to ask you to marry and get married to him at this point? Well, I'm seeing someone right now, and he wants to get married, but I don't want to get married. I've already been married. Right. 
And, and uh, Nor- what, what is your point? Pardon me? What is your point? My point is that um, men and women should, if they don't feel like getting married, and if uh, the men are out there to get the women for their money, they should just date, like you say. Have men, women should have men for which they could date. Okay, this one I'll date today, this one I'll date tomorrow. And right. why, why is it only men? No, I never said it was only men. I'm just saying that most we most women I know, no matter how hard they try to be like guys, eventually their emotions take over and they start wanting to uh, turn it into something more than just sex or just dating. Well, then those women are stupid. They should not let their well, even, even you got married twice. Even you got married twice. Uh, yeah, but I I think after two marriages, I learned my lesson. My good. So I just wanted you maybe, you know, give women advice of doing the same thing. I will give. You. When women call me for advice, I give them advice. I know, but sometimes you're a little rough with them. Uh, hey, hey now, now you see, now you go into another a whole other question here. I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, you are. You're really honest with, with uh, especially with women. You're not. In- if you are, If you are equal to the guys, then you should be able to be treated like the guys. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, some women are sensitive. They can't I don't it. care. That's not my problem. <laughs> okay. I just want to say that you have a great show. And I do. keep giving those people advice. Everybody needs it. All right, I will. Thank you. By the way, Maria, how many guys are you having sex with currently? I guess three. You went a, a three? Yes. And how often uh, do you see each of the three? Um, Maybe... I'm really busy, so I see them one, maybe one on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know. Really? Okay, so you're banging three different guys every week. Right. Good. How is it? It's good. Some are not that good, but, you know. Why do you and keep going with the ones who aren't that good? The ones who are not that good are the ones that think, ooh, I'm the best. And why, the ones that but then good, why do you keep seeing the ones who aren't good? Mm, because I don't have time to go seek other ones, you know? But what's the point of bothering at all if the guy isn't good? Yeah, you got a point right there. Um, I think I'm going to have to uh, check out, uh, see who's good, see who's really good, and see who's not that good, and let them go. Sounds like a plan to me, dear. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. What are you doing out there? Well, we want to flag somebody. All right, here we go. Hold on. You got to roll your windows down. (laughs) He's honking and everything. Look at that. He wants to see them. Here we go. All right, here we go. There goes the horn. (laughs) <laughs> that was great. You, know, you like that? I loved it. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Oh, I'm on the radio. Just hanging out with the boys. Couple of bourbons here. What are you going to do? The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. I'm about to break someone's heart here. Are you guys ready? This is Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, Tom. How are you? Better than you're about to be in about a minute. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, well, I have a problem here. I've been dating this girl for about two years, and um, we're kind of on and off, and I stopped talking to her for about six months. And uh, she had she had another boyfriend, and uh, they broke up a while ago, and then we kind of started catching up again. And we were talking about maybe trying to work things out again. What what should I do? Well, why did you tell you? You just told Dean something totally else, and he what? typed it on the screen. And why did you change your story entirely from when you called in? Well, she wanted a break, and like. Um, that's when she got with somebody else, and then we stopped talking for a while. And we, in the two-year period, we had broken up for about two months, and then got back. Well, Robert, uh, tell everybody your age, please. 
18. Right. And uh, how long have you been listening to this show? For about a week. All right. Have you heard yet what I think about relationships when you're under 25? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of listen to that. Right. So, so what is the I question? What is the question? Um, do you think that I should give it another try or? No. No, just like that, no? No girlfriend. Um, yeah, but she still calls and stuff. So I don't care. Should I just, like, ignore everything? Or? Yes. All right. All right. But you see, you didn't want me to say that. You wanted me to say, oh, no, Robert, you're doing the right thing. Go back to her. She loves you and the two of you belong together. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, why do you I'm call just, for advice? Then, then you're disappointed. The, I didn't say what you wanted me to say. Yeah, I just needed, like, another opinion, you know? Because I got some friends that say, yeah, you know, you should go for it. You never know. You don't need a girlfriend. All right. So I should just the hell with her then? Well, if she'll give you sex, I would take it. But uh, you should be getting sex from numerous sources, not just one. All right. Yeah, that sounds pretty true. I mean, I'm still young, right? You're 18. Yeah. You yeah, can't even legally when, drink yet. When, when we took a break, I felt, like, pretty bad. And I'm, like, whatever about it now. But right now, uh, she came back, and we've been talking for a few days. She came back after the other guy banged her 150 times. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. No, no, it is true. All right. Yeah, thanks, Tom. It was a big help. You sound uh, sarcastic. This is Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good. Uh, I was just calling. The other day you were talking about advertising. Um, yes. And with the whole Tennessee board guy or whatever. Um, the Tennessee Education Association. Yeah, that's. I apologize. Yeah, that's what it was. But um, I was just kind of, I didn't like the way that it seemed like you cared more about selling, uh, you know, each unit rather than, you know, what image people are putting out to, like, little kids and that sort of thing. Uh, that it's up to the parents to control what kids watch. Well, I guess I, I understand that, but, you know, that's that whole V-chip cop-out. That, you know. It's not a cop-out. Why do we go to all the expense of putting V-chips in TV sets? What was the point of that? What was the point? It's yeah. so that, you know, kids can't watch TV. But it's really just... Not so they can't watch TV. It's so that certain programming will not be available to them, and you can decide how much you want them to see or how little. Yeah, but it's based off of parents not being around to really watch what their kids are doing. But you don't have to watch what they're doing. All you have to do is say nothing above uh, the lowest uh, rating for the youngest age possible. You can just put that as the setting on your TV. I understand that. And then no, your TV won't that. show any programming for anybody older than that. I know. I've done reports on, you know, the V-chip. It's just that, you know, the parents aren't the authoritative figure to say, no, don't do it. It's They're using another, you know. What's wrong with that? Uh, it's just, you know. If you actually care about what your kids are doing, why don't you watch them instead of... Well, but if they don't, uh, the rest of us should not have to have our lives uh, suffer because people are abdicating their responsibility. Oh, if people I don't, don't want to raise children, they shouldn't have any goddamn children. Oh, well, I don't think anybody should have any children. I think we're completely overpopulated, but, you know... So what is your point? My point is that, you know, if people are going to still have children, and if we keep conveying these, uh, you know sexy things on them kids are just gonna you know be having sex younger and younger and younger and it can't get much younger the kids are having sex now at 11 yeah well it could be six i mean you know no, i i first of all i highly doubt that that's going to happen second of all i don't think television is what gives them the idea yeah, but it started no i think it's i think television has a big uh you know just media in general uh, yeah, but guess what? There's stuff on the Internet. There's stuff on the newsstand. Then saying. there's people who have HBO and Showtime, and they pay to subscribe to it. That's all the media, though. That's what I'm saying, Tom. But the, but so what? So all of us should be watching Teletubbies just in case no, a kid I might tune in? No, I anybody should watch Teletubbies, Tom. You I know what I mean. That. You know what I mean. Don't be a brick. No, I know. Sorry. All right. Fair enough. 
Uh, you know, I don't think anybody should be watching Teletubbies. But yeah, yeah. Forget Teletubbies, you moron. All of us should be watching program aim, programming aimed at two-year-olds. Is that no what you're saying? saying Just in case a child tunes in and is watching something they shouldn't be watching, the rest of us should all watch children's programming all day long. I haven't said that once, Tom. What are you saying? I'm saying that the parents should be an influence, and I think that... And when they're not, it's not our problem. Those of us who don't have kids, I want to see the Flat Buns commercial, and I don't want people uh, keeping me from no, seeing it. I don't... I think anybody who thinks that's ridiculous... I mean, that's the most ridiculous commercial I've ever seen, I think. I don't care. I think it's entertaining. I think it's funny. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Oh, no. I'm not planning on it, but I'm still going to eat Look. a Carl's Jr. I mean... That doesn't matter. You're, you know, pal, you, you can't keep an argument straight. You can't stay on one subject. Can't stay on topic. It just sounds to me like you're calling here to try to jerk my chain. Yeah, yep, that's what I'm doing, Tom. That's what I thought. Chris on the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? So far, so good. Um, uh, I was calling to talk about uh, hockey um, uh, uh, regarding the uh, Scott uh, Niedermeyer uh, situation. Um, what uh, you know? What are your views on that? Um, uh, I think that, you know, he's kind of holding the team hostage. Well, first of all, the vast majority of people listening don't know who Scott Niedermeyer is, and they oh, don't okay. know what you're talking about. So we'll just say that Scott Niedermeyer is a hockey player okay. who uh, last season played for the Anaheim Ducks, and they won the championship of the NHL, the Stanley Cup. Uh -huh. And uh, he was the captain of the team. And then this year, rather than saying, I'm coming back or I'm not coming back, he said he's undecided. He doesn't know what to do. And yeah, so he, he's my age, you know, uh, I'm only 34, and he's 34. You know, you know, we're both both born in 1973, and and uh, he's, you know, he uh, still has two years under contract at like 14 million, and uh, and uh, I know if I was him, I wouldn't want to hang it up at age 34. So, uh, what but you're not him. I, mean, I know his uh, younger brother Rob's on the team. Uh, you would think that, you know, he would say, "Come on, bro," you know. Hang in there, you know. Play. How do you know he hasn't? No, but I mean, how do you know he? How do you know his brother hasn't? How do you know his brother Rob, who also plays on the team? How do you know he has not said, "Come back, come back"? How do you know he hasn't? Okay, well, uh, if he if he uh, doesn't come back, do the uh, Ducks still have to pay him that fortune? No, million? as a matter of fact, if you've been reading, and like most Tom Likas show listeners, I know you haven't been. <laughs> Uh, if you'd been reading, you would know that uh, two days ago, Scott Niedermeyer was officially suspended by the Ducks. Oh, okay. But it's a formality. He knew he was going to be suspended because he knows that in order to be paid, he had to show up at training camp, and he didn't. Well, uh, I live up here in uh, Seattle, and, and uh, you know, we don't have an a NHL team yet, and we probably, you know, never will. So uh, I don't, you know, read that every day, but... Uh, I know that. Well, you won't have an NHL team until the Sonics move to Oklahoma City. And then when they do that, <laughs> so, then they can reconfigure the arena for uh, hockey. Yeah, so the last thing is, uh, do you think he'll be back this year or no? I think he'll come back in the middle of the season the way Peter Forsberg did a year or two ago. All right, Tom, uh, can, can you take me out uh, Lacey uh, Peterson style? That would be tasteless, Chris, but I think I can. It's Jody on the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I knew who you were about five years ago. I would listen to the radio, and I would kind of go through different stations, and I would pick up what you said once in a while, and I was like, God, this guy is such a sexist jerk. And that was pretty much my perception of you, but I never really listened to you really well. I just would hear things you would say with callers. And I'm a college teacher. I teach public speaking. And last year at this time, one of my students, they have to do informative speeches. One of my students came in and he wanted to do this speech on how to bang a girl for under 40 bucks or something like that. And I was like, uh, I don't think so. And he's like, well, I want to teach like it's 101. And I was like, no way. I was like, that guy is so, he's so sexist. You're not doing that. And I didn't let him do the speech. And then I started listening to you probably after he said that. And now, like, I listen to you all the time. And if a student came in now in one of my classes and wanted to, to do a speech on like it's 101, 
I totally would let him or her do it. I, I just, love I that. It's so funny and so entertaining, and I just I I think it's great. So I just want to tell you, it completely changed my mind. I would let a student in a college class teach Lycus 101. We've been talking about that. There has been talk about uh, Lycus 101 being taught either in a particular seminar or uh, specifically people have wanted to make it into a class at some school. It's really, it's enter- to me, it's entertaining. Like I said, I don't agree with everything, but I love it. It's fun. And I think that it's a really crazy, interesting perspective. And I, and, and he could do research. One of my, one of my big issues was like, oh, where are you going to get research for that? But there's, he could interview you. That could be a source right there. Right. So. Yeah, That's right. so I just I completely changed my mind. It's so fun to talk to you. That's crazy. I can't believe I got through. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's what I just wanted to tell you. I'm in traffic right now on the way to L.A. from Vegas. Sounds good to me, huh? Going to Vegas, huh? We do no, a little I'm anthropological actually, research. Vegas. I'm back. I'm going back to L.A. right now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. All well, right. So- sounds good to me, Joey. Bible style? Bible style? Yeah. Oh, tribal style. I thought you said yeah. Bible style. I said, what? No. Tribal style. Of course I can. Here you go. Tom Lackis. 1 800 5800 Tom. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Lackis Show. Like a sh- shout. We are in Claremont, Kentucky at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery. How great is that? And uh, with us on the phone, he's not having any bourbon because he's driving. That would not be a good idea. Doesn't mean the other people on the road aren't doing it, but I'm sure he's not doing it. Luke Robitaille joins us now from somewhere on the L.A. freeways. Hey, Luke. So I, can, I cannot believe it, but I swear to you, there's no traffic on the freeway I'm on. How did that happen? I don't know. It's like the road's opening up for me today. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what's going on? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing okay. How was your summer? It's doing really good. I mean, it's been... Uh, you know how it is. I mean, uh, it, it's been uh, trying to rebuild the organization, so uh, had a lot to do and and so forth. But uh, you know, it's been it's been busy but fun. Now, now for people who don't know, Luke Robitaille, of course, uh, how you can live in L.A. and not know this, but maybe around the country where we're heard and it's not L.A. Luke Robitaille played how many seasons for the Los Angeles Kings? Fourteen for for the Kings. Fourteen for the I'll, Kings and I'll another. All with you on my side. Of course. <laughs> I think I, I think I saw just about every home game you played. I know. I know. You haven't missed too many, huh? <laughs> That's right. Even you were there for some of those, but I was there. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, now you have a new title, and I wanted to talk to you about that before we get to the, the crux of why you're calling. So you, you have a big responsibility now with the Kings. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really good. I mean, it's... Uh... You know, it's it's totally different than playing. That's for sure. You know, you're coming in. I mean, the the, uh, the shots are not coming physical. They're coming. They're mental shots now. That's but, right. Uh, it's a it, it, you know, for me, it's a great experience. I mean, when, you, when you're a player, you know, and you always, you know, it's easy to complain and say, you know, if they would do it this way and so forth and so forth, uh, you know, maybe it would make a difference. So I have the opportunity to make that difference now, you know, because of all the things that I kind of thought that were easy to fix i realized it's not that it's not as easy as i thought but then yet it can be done you know so for us you know like players that get involved now more and more and onto the other side we were fortunate that we have like a played in in the good days so we were able to pick a job that really it's something that we love to do and we can do and that's exactly what happened to me so you got all this new responsibility what's your new title 
It's uh, president of all the business operation for the Kings. It's a Do- lot of bull crap. <laughs> 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 so, so you went from being a player to suddenly you're in charge of what? All the business hey, operations. We're, uh, we're about uh, about 54 people. Unbelievable. So, hey, I tell you, sometimes I just sit there. I just got to act my way through it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, business operations, does that mean you're in charge of, of uh, the stuff that goes on at the Staples Center or the, the players? What, what, is it everything? You know, what like, is it? Uh, Basically, the way organization works is our president, GM, is in charge of all the player personnel and everything else that goes around the organization as far as the way we structure the organization, ticket sales, marketing, the way we're selling the team, what we're doing in this town, you know, as far as doing everything we do on TV, radio, and so forth, that's the business operation. So it's a lot because what I'm trying to do is we want our team to be relevant in this town. I mean, as everybody knows, how popular the Lakers are and so forth. But, you know, for people that kind of followed the Kings, in the early 90s, the Kings were more popular than the, than the Lakers or any team in town. So we're trying to bring that vibe back and so forth. We know we need to win to do that, but there's a lot of other things we can do in this town. I mean, we're the entertainment capital of the world, so there's a lot of stuff we need to do. And uh, so you're uh, trying to get all that stuff off the ground. And over the years, there have been a lot of changes with the Kings. Uh, first of all, there were a bunch of different owners. And then over the years, they've tried a bunch of different approaches. Uh, sometimes they just seem to be on the right track. Other times, they definitely did not seem to be on the right track. But it seems now like they've got a, a business plan, and they've got uh, planned uh, both on the player side and on the marketing side to finally do it all right at the same time. Yeah, we got a little bit more of a plan. I think the team has had the last four or five years. You know, it really went kind of. I mean, everybody knows or has heard of AEG and what they're doing and so forth. And AEG was built on the base of the Kings. So when AEG started, I mean, it was basically the Kings only. And then along the way, they started building arenas in London and Kansas City. They're doing all kinds of shows in New York. They were a promotion company. They do Coachella. I mean, they got stuff. I think they got four or 5,000 employees. So it's just that people got too busy. So now what we're doing is we're separating the kids from AEG. And uh, basically, we're using AEG like a big brother. Everything we need, we go to them. But then yeah, we run our own organization like we would be a standalone organization, you know. And in reality, in pro sports, that's what you need to do because you're dealing with people every day and with emotion, you know. Now, it says here also that uh, you're picking up David Beckham's dry cleaning. Is that right? No, yeah, that's, you know, the, we have to do that. And we, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, the way he sold jerseys, I think I'm making him a King's jersey. <laughs> uh, now, tell us, tell us about you got a big poker game coming up for charity. Tell us the deal. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, my wife and I, uh, when uh, we started a foundation when Katrina happened and we helped a bunch of families, and now, you know, because we don't want to wait for, you know, bad events to happen and so forth, we we switch our foundation to help uh, kids that are underprivileged, you know, and uh, they're coming out of foster homes. So we're helping a lot of kids now. So we've we've done a few events, and people have always been behind us. And next week the Kings are playing in Vegas at the MGM, so – the night before, we do a poker charity event, and all the players are coming to play, and it's going to be a blast, you know. And uh, so anybody, we we only have a few spots left, and it's a, uh, you know, it's at MGM, so it's a lot of fun, and uh, you know, we got we get to hang out with the players and play, and whoever wins can win some big cash. Wow! And uh, how can people get involved? Is there a phone number? How do they do it? Yeah, they can call three one zero four four one. Nine eight six two. Three one oh four four one nine eight six two. Or they can go to Echoes of Hope dot org O R G. Fantastic. Or, or or they could call you personally. I mean they could call yeah. you. <laughs> That's right. I'll hook them up with you. Absolutely. We'll get it exactly. done. Or call my house. What the heck? What the hell? Hey. Hey, uh hey Luke, are you uh, are you going on that junket to London? Oh, you bet you, my friend. I'll be hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm looking forward to it. You know, we got one, you, you know we got one good night there, for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, at least. As you know, uh, London You know, London consumes more wine per capita than any major city in the world. Is that right? And I got my expert with me. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. 
Well, so good to talk to you. And uh, when we get back to town, we'll have you come in. Yeah. And we'll uh, talk a bit more about the upcoming season uh, uh, because, uh, obviously, uh, it's very exciting. And even though it was the Anaheim Ducks that won the Stanley Cup, it's great for hockey, I think, in Southern California. And I think yeah. it's going to get the NHL some respect west of the Mississippi, which I think it really needs. Yeah, and you know what that does, huh? It makes it makes the Kings want to be good real fast. That's right, exactly. That's the, you know, which is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. Well, it, we'll have you come in and we'll talk about some of the new players. You guys made a lot of changes this summer, and uh, I think you guys are going in the right direction. I think it's good. Okay, all right, I'm coming in. When we come back from London, I'm going in to bother you for a while. All right, good. Sounds good to me. Okay, thanks, Robert. I'll see you next week. All right, very good, Luke. Okay, thanks, Rob. Okay. See you later. Bye. His number Bye. hangs on the rafters. Bye-bye now, Luke. Uh, Luke's number, by the way, number 20, hangs on the rafters at Stable Center. Highest scoring left wing in the history of the National Hockey League. And his number was retired last year by the Kings in a great ceremony. And uh, what just no doubt, even though Wayne Gretzky was the best hockey player probably of all time, Luke Robitaille, also one of the great hockey players of all time and the most popular Los Angeles King of all time. And a friend. Good guy. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Flash Friday. This is Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Doing yeah, a radio show. your feelings on Jim Cramer. Uh, Jim Cramer, of course, is the guy that does the show called Mad Money on CNBC. And he's, of course, as a result of doing the show, he's written books. He's always on tour like a rock star. But a couple of weeks ago in Barron's, there was a story, and I know as a Tom Likas listener, you don't read uh, publications like Barron's, so I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, but I read it for you, so I can tell you what's in it. Uh, Jim Cramer uh, was, uh, they did a little research on Jim Cramer's stock picks, and they found out that his stock picks are so bad, you'd be better off putting your money in an index fund rather than investing in the stock picks that he recommends. And they actually showed charts of all the stock picks and how badly some of them have done. Wow. So as a new investor, you don't think I should uh, follow what he's doing? No. Huh? In fact, I'm going to tell you something else. Are you aware there are people on Wall Street who make money from Jim Cramer's picks? Do you know how they do it? No. Oh. They short all the stocks he recommends. <laughs> wow. You know what that means, to short a stock, right? No, I'm actually very new at this. So. Okay. To short a stock, is it's a means of betting that a stock is going to go down. So there are professionals on Wall Street who watch Jim Cramer on CNBC. They see what he's recommending, and then they bet against it. Wow. That's some great information another time. I mean, and, and by the way, don't take my word for it. Go to Barron's, B-A-R-R-O-N-S dot com and read the story for yourself. The guy's stock picks are not even as good as if you put your money in, like, the Vanguard Standard & Poor's 500 Index Fund. Hmm. Well, sounds good. He's very entertaining to watch, but uh, you'll be very disappointed to read the specifics of all his stock picks. Uh, well, yeah, I was, I was, I've been watching it for a little while, and it uh, sounds like he's got good ideas, but, you know, I'm not Well, really... lots of things sound good. Right. You know, uh, my mortgages with no money down sounded good a few years ago, remember? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to those? <laughs> Through the roof. No, 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 not through the roof. The people are losing their houses. I, I, you are new at all this, but trust me when I tell you, this article was in Barron's. Read it, and then make a, make a decision accordingly to get information from more sources than just the guy who screams into the camera. Yeah. All right, for sure, Tom. Thanks for that. Okay, thank you. I love, you know, if people can make any claims they want, but I love reading the specific statistical facts. I am an all about the statistics kind of guy. People love saying that Jim Cramer, he's so great. I, I, he said to buy Apple, and I bought Apple. <laughs> Shut up. You got to be kidding me. What's that, Gary? He wouldn't come on our show. He probably thought I had the charts in front of me or something. Unbelievable. All right, uh, our email address, it's my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on the grounds of the Jim Beam Distillery. The Tom Likas Show.